Welcome back to Mummy Talk. So we're talking about fun sports and activities that we have available in our community. Yeah, so and we had hockey on like, and we learned all about me? the upcoming no tournaments. No. Well, what is the other staple that every child has? Well, girls in specific, and that is Girl Guides. So we are luckily enough to be joined by Shannon and her daughter. So welcome, guys. Hi, how are you? I am so amazing. So we just had hockey on and we're I'm all sorry. fired up, you know, <laughs> talking about hockey and everything. But Girl Guides, like that is a staple of all young girls mm -hmm. everywhere. It is, you know, it is the thing that, that girls do. So tell us how you got involved in Girl Guides. Ah, oh, wow, that's an interesting story, actually. Um, we need leaders in Keswick, and uh, and it was quite fantastic. So the, my daughter was a spark, Sarah, and um, one of the sparks' moms, she joined and became the leader as um, as we did see some leaders, you know, leave. And uh, she was wonderful. What can I say? Lori was great. And then... Um, you know, as you know, the year went on, I got to meet the parents and stuff. And then Sarah says to me, she says, Mom, if Heather's mom can do it, you can. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> She's totally team you, right? Yeah, yeah. And then three years later, here I am. I'm with three units. Um, I'm with the first Keswick Guides, which is Sarah's unit. I'm with the fourth Keswick Brownies and the third Keswick Sparks. I help out with all of the, all of them, and I'm in one of them. Wow, That's wonderful! You have a busy schedule. So tell me, what is your favorite part of it? Um, probably going camping and being with all the girls and just having fun. Probably, yeah. Just having fun. Is it always fun or is it hard work? Well, there's sometimes when you have to be serious, but usually it's all fun. Usually it's all fun. Where do you get to go camping? Um, there's camps around the area. There's Makiwa, Doe Lake. I don't know them all, but there's Have you been some. to them all? No, I've only been to Akiwa. Is there, are they age specific camps? No, it's no. just all the girls together? Well, it depends. It, they're owned by Girl Guides of Canada mm -hmm. and uh, you book your campsite. Um, you know, we choose to go to Camp Makiwa because it's close um, and it's handy. So I've done everything from Mummy and Me camps with the Sparks to the last camp that we just did. We um, branched the uh, Brownies and the Guides together and it was a lot of fun. Um, we did winter camp, so they got to do some winter sports. Um, wow, winter camp, that sounds like a great time. Yeah, there's also tent camping that you can do at some of them. And you have to sleep in a tent or like you just put up the tent and then you get to come and sleep inside? <laughs> um, well, you put up the tent, you sleep in the tent, or you go into a building and sleep there. Oh, okay, so you have your choice. Is there bears around? Um, uh, Did you see any? We've only seen rabbit, fox, deer. Oh, well, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I, I can handle that. But if I had to sleep outside and there's like bears and stuff, I think maybe I wouldn't. Be. I don't think there's bears. No? No. And I what? I don't know about the campsites further north. There may be. But maybe? Yeah, the ones Where close to town. Where is Mikiwa? Mikiwa's just on Highway 9. Oh, well, that's not yeah, too far. Yeah, just before, just before Orangeville. So oh. it's not too far at all. And there is um, there is other camps around too. There's um, some in... I want to say just outside of Uxbridge. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're around. They, they book up pretty quickly, though. So, you know, we have to, as leaders, we have to be on our game to make sure that we, you know, get the, the prime times and, and stuff like that. So when does one sign up for Girl Guides? Um, probably September. Um, I know that our registration site will be opening April the 1st for any new girls that want to come in. So that would be kind of the time to do it. What age do they start at? Uh, Sparks is 5 to 6. Okay. And then they go up from there. So brownies would be 7 and 8, guides would be 9 to 12, and then there's pathfinders from 12 to 15, and then the rangers would be 15 to 18. Wonderful. Really now, nice. does this, if you um, are a ranger or, like, how your daughter goes in and helps, does that count towards, like, for high school students yes. doing volunteering? Yes. Mm -hmm. In our guide unit, we do have a pathfinder that does come in, and she is getting her community hours for school. Oh, wow. And I make her work for it. That's a good thing. <laughs> I, you know, 
know what? I'm sure that all of it is work. I mean, to put it all together and have yeah. the organization of everything that happens, you know, with every meeting, there it definitely has to be. And alternatively, to um, if anybody has an organization and they want to send somebody to one of our meetings for community hours, um, as leaders, we're always willing to take suggestions. So, for example, um, the Georgina Family Martial Arts came in, and that would have been, um, you know, to do a demonstration for the Sparks and the Brownies, and that would have been an opportunity for them to get some community hours if they needed it. Wow, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. A great way to kind of give back in the community and get everybody involved. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And then, wonderful. of course, too, we were talking about sports. It's a good opportunity for the um, the girls to try their hand at something to see if they like it before they go and register. So myself as a leader, I know that that's something that I try to do. I try to bring in different aspects. So we've had yoga. We've had karate. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, different arts uh, uh, classes. You know, um, coming up in the Brownie unit, we will be doing and dance and stuff like that and then of course that gives a chance for you know moms to say hey you know what how did you enjoy that we can now investigate that a little bit further how many different um packs are there you know just in our in our area okay so there's two sparks groups there's two brownie groups um there's two guide groups and one pathfinder group in keswick then in Sutton, there is a multi-branch group of uh, Sparks, Brownies, and Guides, and then there's a Pathfinder group. Oh, wow. So no matter where you kind of are in Georgina, there's, you can touch it in everywhere. And if there's more than one group, that's because there's such a high demand for it in, in the community. I hope so. I, I really do. That's um, sort of, that will be m sort of my direction that I would like to go now as the community guider. I would really like to see um, some interest. We, I would like to see the girls out in the community a little bit more to spark the interest. Absolutely. No pun intended. Spark the interest. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. So um, now I see you guys are wearing, you know, everything that says girl guides and, you know, so if I went online and, and signed up, you know, my daughter, then do I order all of this stuff? Is there a specific uniform that I have to wear? So the Girl Guide um, site is, is quite user friendly. Um, so what you would do is after registration, you would go to the online store and with one click of a button, you could get the full in, full uniform. Um, I do tend to tell parents though that the uniform is quite pricey for the pants and stuff. So you can actually buy this stuff individually as well and always talk to the leaders too and find out what the leaders are gonna require. Yep for the uniform. Um, but if I, you look, pink is for sparks, brown is for brownies, and then blue is for guides, green is for pathfinders, red is for rangers, I think, and then leaders don't have a color. Oh, that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. So everybody's color coordinated, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, based on the level. That's phenomenal. So how does one go from moving level to level? Is it just an age requirement? Yeah, it's an age requirement. And we have special ceremonies that are called flying up and then the girls fly up to their next level. Wow, that's phenomenal. Sounds like a lot of fun. It does, it sounds like a great time, right? <laughs> we try. We something like this for moms, you know? Where we can all get together and... Well, no, funny that you should say that because, as I said, we are always looking for volunteers here in Keswick for leadership roles. And one of my things that I would also like to do as the appointed community guider is I would like to um, bring the sisterhood of guiding up here because, you know what, it's not just for the young girls. It's also for moms. We can have fun, too. And um, I'm hoping to do some sisterhood um, get-togethers and stuff like that where, you know, we're going to start to hopefully bring guiding back to adults as well. Do you have to have we, a child in to be one of the volunteers? No, or? absolutely not. Oh, okay. No, you just... Yeah, because my daughter's 15 and she's... She's gone, like, gone. Yeah. There's no... Yeah, she's all into boys and iPhones, so... Yeah. <laughs> Somehow she just missed all that. But we actually have some pictures of you guys and some, you know, inner community things that you guys have done as a group together. Um, this is the Santa Claus Parade. This is from last year. From absolutely. last year? Yep. And you guys do it every year? We try to. Um, I've only been in, involved with uh, the Girl Guides uh, in Keswick for three years. And so far, we've done okay. Um, so the, a few of the leaders around town, we got together and decorated the float and uh, had a great time. Again, this is where the adults, you know, we get to have fun as adults. And right there, that's me, and then that's one of my f friends from when we did the Terry Fox run. 
Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Terry Fox run. The Terry Fox run was a fun time. Yeah. Oh, what's that's this? That's at camp this when you camp were having a campfire. Oh, wonderful. So, Look at them all sitting there hanging out. Yeah, a big bunch of you. Yeah, yeah that's and a lot of people. We had uh, we had a ton of fun, and um, we met up with another group at camp, which is fantastic because um, when you go to the Girl Guide camps, you do meet up with other units from around Ontario and from around Canada, and um, we got to lead in some camp songs, and uh, yeah, it was. Oh, I remember that one year. That was so much fun. Do you guys ever have anything where like all of the Girl Guides that are like? Ontario has a central meeting place yes. where everybody can get together. So last year was at Canada's Wonderland and it was Rally. And um, it's a huge girl guiding event where they just celebrate the sisterhood of guiding. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. That's phenomenal. So you had mentioned before that the, you know, the uniform and you can go online and register. So approximately how much is it for a family, for a uh, mother, child, parents to so, register their child. Okay, so uh, adult members don't pay. We, we don't have to pay for our membership, which is um, great. And for, you have to correct me if I'm wrong, I believe for the first child, it's $160 for the registration fee. Um, and there may be a discount for other, child, other girls that are joining. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. You have to go to the website to find that out. I only have one, so I've never been in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then based on um, the individual units, it could be, um, you know, a small fee that's due each meeting, which we call dues. Oh, okay. So it could, I know it could be anywhere from a dollar, maybe two dollars per meeting. Oh, well, that's and, not bad. Um, I know for myself in, in the three groups that I do, I sort of do the honor system. We don't really tag, you know, if you got it, great. If you don't, and then that just goes back into the meeting to, you know, offset the, the price of crafts and, and so on and so forth. Oh, that's phenomenal. So um, what if it's an underprivileged family that can afford the registration but can't afford the dues? Um, then for myself, I, it's not an issue. Um, you know what, we don't even, we don't even, as I said, take um, count of who's paying the dues, so it wouldn't even be an issue. Um, and I do know that if the registration is a concern, um, there is scholarships and subsidized um, that Girl Guides will do, and they'll do that for camp as well. Oh, that's phenomenal. That's really, yeah. Really good. Yeah. Yeah, they will pay to um, to help send the girls to camp. So, you, you know, pay your registration fee and then maybe a $2 due a week or $1 um, and and that's it. You don't have to bring your own craft supplies. You don't no. have to. You just mm. come and how long are the meetings? Uh, the sparks are an hour from 6:30 to 7:30 and brownies and guides, I believe pathfinders and rangers are from 6:30 till 8. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that's a good amount of time that you get to, you know, meet, link, you know, share stories. Yeah, so uh, the, um, the it's, it's only an hour a week or an hour and a half a week, but the true bonding actually happens at camp. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's where we've seen, you know, lasting friendships for sure. Absolutely. How I mean, many times do you guys go on your on your camping? Um, the sparks we try, at least myself, um, I try to get the sparks out at least once a year. If, um, But I try to do it with a mummy and me. And then the brownies and the guides we try to do two, twice a year. Oh, so we try okay. to do a fall, a, a fall or a winter and then a spring camp. Well, they're young, right? I mean, they're, you know, five and six. That might be a little hard yeah. for some of them to take out, you know, from being with their mom. But we have so much more to talk to you guys about. We haven't even got to all the stuff on the table. So stay tuned. Coming up after the break, more about Girl Guides.